Apocalypse, A Spiritual Guide to the Second Coming by Dr. Jim Richards. Introduction, Ears to Hear. A hearing ear has no preference other than hearing. If you were to ask any Christian, in fact, almost any person on planet Earth, if they want to always know the truth, the answer would be an emphatic yes. But if that were really true, the world would not be the chaotic mess it is today. Truth, while becoming harder and harder to discern, can always be known by those who truly seek it above all else. Truth is not simply accurate information. Truth is accurate information and all it implies. Unless we understand the implications, accurate information can be used to deceive. Jesus came to bring us truth, all that was implied and intended by every word God had spoken. This book is not written from the perspective that the insights presented here are the only way to interpret the material, but it is written in a way that will increase your capacity for the truth. As the most catastrophic events ever experienced on planet Earth unfold, it is essential that we know the truth. In this case, the truth about the end has little to do with our interpretations of the events, but has everything to do with the warnings and preparations taught by our Lord Jesus. Too often we hear a message about the return of Jesus that plunges us into fear, overwhelms us with information, or in some manner paralyzes us. The emphasis seems to always be more on end-time tragedy than Jesus' personal return or the horrors of the devil instead of the protection of the Lord. God's word, even his revelations about the most horrific events, are always designed to warn, equip, and comfort those who know him and are fully committed to following him. It is his intention that all his children be overcomers or at the very least capable of enduring. But in our quest for end-time knowledge, we've ignored the most important single capacity for absolute victory. Ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. There can be a variety of reasons someone does not want to hear the truth. As Jesus said, we sometimes close our ears lest we hear. The need to be right drives us to only want the portion of truth that confirms the notion that our opinion is correct. When we have something to lose, we tend to long for a version of the truth that appears to protect us from loss. If a particular truth presents the possibility of danger or hardship, it is human nature to deny, discredit, or otherwise convince ourselves of an account of truth less threatening. All of these factors can cause us to twist what we read and what we hear in our heart to something more palatable. Jesus repeats an admonition given while preaching the essential aspects of the gospel of the kingdom. In this case, he added this phrase, what the Spirit says to the church. When he originally said these words, there was no church. But in Revelation, he had a message to the churches of Asia. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The book of Revelation is one of the most challenging and difficult books of the Bible to understand. Yet, within it is the key to overcoming during the world's most difficult period of history. It is a message to the church, the body and bride of Christ, his most valued love, those for whom he sacrificed his life and fought the most significant spiritual battle in all of history. Even though these words were originally spoken to a particular group, like all his words, they are life for the church of all ages. This is something he wants us to hear and understand. The other books of the Bible, with the exception of some futuristic prophecies they may contain, relate to past history. It's easy to look back and understand what they meant because we have the historical record for comparison. But the book of Revelation is the future. We have nothing with which to compare these events. Or maybe we do. If instead of attempting to interpret these future events based solely on current events, we use past history and other events documented in the Bible as the main key to interpretation, we could demystify that which seems so complex. One of the most important keys to biblical interpretation is this. Let the Bible interpret the Bible. Failure to utilize recorded biblical past events may be a major contributor to confusing and often erroneous doctrinal as well as prophetic interpretation. 
we must compare these futuristic prophecies to what God has said and done in the past to best understand them. As you will discover, a major aspect of the worldwide conspiracy of the father of all lies is to twist our understanding of both biblical and secular history. Of course, the phrase biblical and secular history is to some degree a misnomer. It is impossible to properly interpret any account of history without an accurate knowledge of biblical history. Biblical history is the light whereby we judge all accounts of history. Failure to do so not only leads to a perversion of the truth of God's word, but will also lead to an antichrist, luciferian opposition to the truth. If we understand history from a biblical perspective, we would not be vulnerable to so many false theological doctrines about God. In fact, armed with the historical spiritual facts, our understanding of the future would be almost crystal clear. Perhaps there is another factor that makes end-time teaching so difficult to understand. There are so many people teaching various versions of coming events. We not only have information overload, we also have contradictory information overload. Obviously, there are doctrinal positions that are so theologically murky, they cloud the pool of biblical knowledge. We feel compelled to choose one teaching over another. Sometimes a particular interpretation may have very accurate information mixed with a very inaccurate situation. Maybe we have put our attention and efforts in the wrong place. Maybe we should start with what we know. And there is nothing more clear than what Jesus said we must do to prepare. The days that are coming will affect the entire world unlike anything that has ever happened. As you will soon discover, there will be many paths of destruction working in various ways. We will look at many of these demonic factors and show the reader how they are all different dimensions of one spirit working toward the collapse of the entire world. We know in the end there will be a great falling away. I believe part of that falling away will occur because believers will think God failed them. Those who set their entire hope on a particular unfolding of events will be rendered hopeless if they are wrong. It is possible to be so committed to a predetermined position we will not recognize when or if the Spirit of the Lord is leading in a direction we did not expect. This book is written to move you to put your trust in God, to be able to hear his voice and be willing to follow no matter how things unfold. John 9 recounts the story of Jesus healing a blind man. In verse 39, while explaining that he came so the blind could see, the Pharisees ask, are you saying we are blind? He then points out in verse 41, the reason they were blind was from their insistence that they could see. A key to hearing God with pinpoint accuracy is realizing we may not really see as clearly as we think. The one who has ears to hear will have a working knowledge of the Bible, would be aware of the different possibilities of how the events unfold, and will be open to hear the voice of God in their heart. As much as anything, it requires the surrender of all egotistical attachment to our opinions. In the final analysis, having ears to hear is not necessarily going to depend on how much Bible we know, although that can be an incredible antidote to deception. It will be about our ability to hear and know the voice of God in our hearts. After all, the Spirit of God is not nearly as interested in proving us right in our eschatology as he is in leading us into the realm of the kingdom where God's power, provision, and protection abound. Have you ever trusted the wrong person, invested in a bad business deal, married the wrong person, or taken the wrong job? We all have. These are all times we do not have ears to hear. God always attempts to lead us, but for various reasons, we either fail to hear or refuse to follow. We have never made a bad decision from which God was not trying to protect us. Owning this truth is the starting place to opening the ears of our hearts to hear. I'm not as interested in changing your theology as I am in helping you develop a hearing ear. Spiritual Guide Learning to walk with God from your heart today is the only solution for facing the future with any real hope of overcoming. And remember, the promises in the book of Revelation are to those who overcome. Begin today to develop a life of meditation, 
reflection, and prayer. Make all of your decisions with a deliberate intention to yield to the Holy Spirit, no matter how he may lead. If you need tools for developing an awareness of Christ, visit www.heartphysics.com and get Essential Heart Physics. This is a 30-day life renewal program designed to help you create an abiding awareness of Christ in you, which is the first step toward hearing the voice of God in your heart. In the final analysis, having ears to hear, what the Spirit is saying exceeds the boundaries of an open mind, an understanding of eschatology, or anything else that depends on an intellectual understanding of the end times. There are so many factors that we do not and will not recognize until they happen. In the end, what really matters is, will I hear the voice of God as he is leading me and my family into protection, safety, and provision, when my logical mind is telling me all is failing? I want you to know, hear, trust, and follow the voice of God in your own heart, not just in the end, but now in life. In fact, I do not want you to live like we are living in the end times. I want you to discover this incredible paradox. Live like everything Jesus said about the end is true and happening soon. But at the same time, enjoy a life alive to the spirit of God. Live with a certain awareness of eternity for yourself and others. Yet be able to experience abundant life here and now. Above all, Follow the Holy Spirit every day as if your life depends on it. If we do this, we will be as prepared as possible. Unlike any end times book I've ever read, at the end of most chapters, I provide you with some practical or spiritual steps you can take to prepare yourself for what you learned. This section is termed Spiritual Guide. I will present you with concepts that may be different than anything you have heard concerning the end and how to prepare for it. I'm not trying to get you to reject your current views as much as I want you to open your mind to the possibility of different scenarios and how they could unfold. This willingness to see other possibilities will open you to the voice of the spirit as he leads you through the valley of the shadow of death onto green pastures, still waters. Strong protection and supernatural provision. The most important thing you should know is this. While the world is plunging into total darkness, the Bible provides an account of the individuals who stood against all the powers of darkness and won. This cloud of witnesses provides a model for how to win against all odds. The common denominator in all of these people of faith is that they trust God and then followed the leading of his spirit. As you read the introductions and conclusions to each section, your perspective will be brought back to one reality. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You and God are a majority. We have this cloud of witnesses who stood and overcame. You are more than a conqueror because the true conqueror lives in you and you in him. Introduction to Section 1, From Lucifer's Rebellion to the Flood To understand the end, we must understand the beginning. Jesus said the time of the end would be just as it was in the days of Noah. The problem is few believers have a true biblical picture of what really happened in the years preceding the flood. Yet, in order to recognize what will occur in the world just prior to the physical return of the Lord Jesus we must decipher world events. Even more important is the fact that those who served God were delivered from darkness prior to the flood, and their deliverance occurred in many different ways. The one common denominator was they heard and followed the voice of God as he led. In other words, they had ears to hear. One of the most important rules of biblical interpretation is the law of first reference. The law of first reference says we must go to the first time something is mentioned in scripture to get the clearest, most concise understanding of a truth. Although other factors could compound or augment our understanding of that truth, they can never change that truth. One of the darkest eras in history occurred when Christian era religionists departed from the teaching of the Old Testament as a basis for understanding many of the most fundamental aspects of God's plan and his nature. The Old Testament is full of types that were fulfilled in Jesus. 
To fulfill something means to bring it to its fullest expression and intention. For example, the feast, holy days, sacrifices, rituals, and ceremonies were types that had their true and full expression in the life, death, resurrection, and inheritance of the Lord Jesus Christ. The rejection of those types meant the religionists would create their own definitions and explanations of the cross independently of what God had revealed. The confusion comes when they use biblical terminology with secular definitions and explanations. The hearer thinks they are talking about the Bible when in fact they may be talking about an occult Luciferian doctrine but disguising it in biblical terminology. This has happened in every area of biblical doctrine, but for our purposes, we must consider how this has occurred in eschatology. Religionists have hijacked the truth of God's word and made it impotent and powerless, devising bizarre interpretations of revelation and other end-time prophecies that contradict things God has made clear in the Old Testament. The Bible foretold with uncanny accuracy the years the Messiah would be born and then crucified. This is why Herod's astrologers were so intently looking for the sign of the Messiah at that particular time. While we obviously do not know the exact time of his second coming, we can know all the signs with absolute clarity. In fact, Jesus and Paul comforted us with the fact that while those days would come as a thief in the night to the world, we are not of the world, that those days should take us unaware. There is no reason for us to be shocked, surprised, or unprepared for anything that occurs in our lifetime, whether it is in the end of the age or just a time of persecution. Without understanding the beginning of biblical history, we are like someone who wandered into a mystery movie an hour late. We're trying to figure out the plot in Killer based only on what is being revealed before our eyes. We are attempting to relate the storyline to other movies we have seen. But we get it all wrong because we missed the first half of the movie. The average Christian has very little knowledge or understanding of what happened in the beginning. We have no real clue how the world got where it is. And without that understanding, it is impossible to understand how Scripture says this present age will end up. In the absence of God's spiritual account of history, we rely on a secular, atheistic, false science to explain what only can be understood from God's word. Reading this section, you may experience a dramatic shift in your current understanding and perspective of biblical history. And with each subsequent section, you will get a clearer picture of world events from God's perspective, all of which will make understanding end time events far more simple and clear. The early sections of this book may seem very negative, but remember, these are events that have already happened, and they speak for themselves. There is no way to make a war on earth by fallen angels and a worldwide flood happy news. But we will find the positive nuggets in some incredibly dark times in history. Most importantly, we will discover how to find and connect with God and experience His power, protection, and provision no matter what comes. We will learn these lessons from those who have fought and won. Mm -hmm.